Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Still nothing? Okay, you can hear me now? Okay, good. All right, all right, we're in business, we're in business. So uh, again, we're gonna start here in a second. Try to start it on time. Uh, as I said, it's a little weird cause I'm actually looking at myself here. And uh, let me go ahead and get my info that we're gonna discuss up. Oh man, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Let's see what I got here. Oh, I hadn't downloaded it. Good. Okay, good, 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 good. So if you're joining us right now, welcome to tonight's Flip with Nar live on YouTube. We're transitioning over from any meeting uh, to YouTube. Just gonna be a second here, we're gonna get started. I welcome those that have already made it. I just need to download what we're gonna talk about tonight. Again, if you're over on any meeting, you're on the phone, you need to just go on your smartphone if you are on a smartphone or you need to log on to the internet and go to flippinard.com, you go there, you can access the uh, tonight's Flippinard. It's very simple. Just tap the button and you're, you're in. So you do need internet service. So if you're on any meeting on the regular channel, you need to just go to flippinard.com to uh, access uh, tonight's meeting. So we have a few people already. Really appreciate everyone that's already showing up. So again, if you're on any meeting, you need to go over to flippinard.com to, to uh, access the meeting. Just tap you, YouTube Live. All right, so show a folder. So there we go. All right. All right, so uh, we're going to get started here. Um, so I'm going to record. But welcome to this week's Flipping Art. This is Ty AK, the Flip Man. Um, tonight's topic is going to be locating owners of vacant houses. Going to go into detail about that. We'll give away two free courses um, along with um, um, a question and answer period. Well, I will evaluate some deals also. So um, if I have any technical issues, if, if, if you all will please let me know, uh, that would help me out. So with no further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So um, I'll share my screen. All right, boom. So um, I'm assuming you all can see my screen here. Um, so we're in business. So yeah, if you're over on flippinar.com, you need to go to flippinar.com if you're on any meeting to uh, access tonight's uh, flippinar. So if you're on any meeting, you need to go to flippinar.com to access the meeting. I'll leave it up on the meeting. You can hear me, uh, probably can't hear me as well, but um, I'll leave it up there. So again, to access the meeting, flippinard.com. So again, so welcome everyone. This is Ty, uh, AKA the Flip Man. Tonight's uh, topic, locating owners of vacant houses. All right, so Obviously, this is a huge part of how you find deals. Uh, some of the best deals that I've been able to locate uh, over the years uh, have been 
uh, through just simply just driving for dollars. Um, so this is an opportunity for you for for me to go over some of the strategies that I've used to do just that. I did a video. I had to look back. I, I was pretty sure I've done one, but it was almost three years ago. So um, and people still <laughs> ask this question. So I, I thought it was a topic that I could do a refresher on and uh, you could learn something from it. So tonight's topic, locating owners of vacant houses. All right, now before Just to do a little house cleaning uh, from advice from the attorney. You're not going to make $10,000 if you don't do anything. And most people know this, but we just have to say it as a disclaimer. Again, I want to give away two free courses at the end of the, uh, the flipinar tonight. Uh, so don't let me forget two free courses. Uh, no coaching. You just get the courses. Still have this building available. Um, been like pulling teeth dealing with this uh, mom and pop owner. Uh, so as of right now, it's still available. Got a lot of interest. Appreciate everyone that's um, uh, brought information to the table uh, on it. Um, so hey, it's still available. That money's still available. All the information is at apartmentsforsale.net. Again, if you're on uh, any meeting. Um, if you have access to the internet, you can simply go to flippinart.com to access uh, on YouTube, you know, so it's very easy to get onto. You don't have to download anything. All right, so apartmentsforsale.net. Obviously, if you're on YouTube, I have the 200 plus free videos uh, for anyone to take advantage of, uh, 200 free video tutorials. If you're on YouTube, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. But when you subscribe, uh, go back and tap the little bell right by subscribe to turn on the notifications. So whenever I upload new videos and when I go live, you will be alerted on your smartphone or via email immediately. So again, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. You see the handles here. You'll see these throughout the flipinar. If you want a free copy of the one page contract that I have used and continue to use and others all over the country, just text the word, you want a free copy, text the word contract to 313131. That's 313131. Text the word contract to 313131. Do not text me, text the word contract. So that number, it's only those six numbers. And I'm amazed at the number of people that don't know how to do that, but it is what it is. All right, uh, some people ask for it. No, it's available. You want me to come to your city uh, to coach you live? It's an option. Um, it's not free, obviously. So if you're interested, just text or call me for pricing. Commercial real estate, I talk about it quite a bit in detail uh, as far as what I'm doing, what I'm offering and, and reach it out to, to find buyers or whatever, because part of the reason that I even started doing these videos was to get to this point one day where I had enough of a following where I could say, Hey, I got this profit. Boom, bring me a buyer. Boom. We, we, here's, here's what you'll make if you produce a buyer. So, but you have an opportunity to learn a lot of the same things to uh, multifamily properties, slash, you know, which that's a form of commercial, commercial properties themselves, mainly triple net, single tenant, vacant, or field triple net opportunities. There's no competition. Uh, you can do it virtually. This is true virtual wholesaling. You can sit at your laptop and target the entire country. There's a sea of, an opportun sea of opportunity. As I said, the entire country is your playground. No cash or credit needed, really. No cash or credit needed, needed and obviously big fat paydays. All right. Uh, my goal here tonight is if you don't know anything about real estate or you're all killing it, is to introduce you to wholesaling if you haven't already been introduced to it. So I, I, I tinker with this definition a little bit and may tinker with it a little more, but uh, wholesaling houses is a form of flipping houses itself. The time frame is much shorter and no repairs are made to the house before the property is purchased. A wholesaler enters a purchase and sales agreement, a contract, 
with a seller and then assigns the contract to a cash buyer for a hefty assignment fee. Here's an example. You have a house that's in excellent condition it would be worth $100,000. We call that ARV, which is mean after repair value, but simply put, what would the house appraise for in excellent condition? For whatever reason, you can get this property on the contract for $30,000 with the actual seller. Uh, it may be a uh, tired landlord, it may be an inheritance, probate, um, loss of income, loss of job, relocation, um, divorce. It can be any number of reasons that causes them to be motivated to, to sell. And the house can look like this picture here. All right. You place it under contract with the seller for the $30,000. You then market to your cash buyers, or if you don't have any cash buyers, for $45,000. Okay. Uh, one buyer steps forward. He's taking a look at the house. You send him a video link that you uploaded to YouTube once you viewed the house to make it easy for your buyer. And the buyer stepped forward and says, hey, um, well, he took a look at the house also. He walked through it. But the buyer steps forward and says, hey, I can't do 45. Would you accept 41,000? I don't know about you, but I'm accepting the 41,000. So now you have a contract A. For thirty thousand, you have contract B, which is set with your buyer for forty-one thousand. All right. So the difference is your actual assignment fee. So you walk away from the closing table with eleven thousand dollars. That's your payday. So that's basically a wholesale deal. All right. Is this something that you should be doing? Well, here's a couple of examples of students, and I have actual interviews on these on my YouTube channel. Uh, where one student, he made $21,500 uh, on that deal and only put up $10 in earnest money. He, he used uh, direct mail, if I'm not mistaken, on, on locating that deal. And you can see the return on investments in a ridiculous amount, 214,900%. Another student in Baltimore, he used bandit signs, placed a $1 earnest money deposit and uh, made 32,000, he actually split that with another partner. I think the other guy did also. But uh, the turn on investment with a $1 earnest money is over 3 million, 3 million, 199,900%, ridiculous amount. Now people say, well, should I start out flipping or wholesaling? Now, if you have the resources to flip, you can go into that. But if you're just talking about return on investment, as far as and, and what risk you have involved, wholesaling is going to, uh, going to dwarf AKA flipping, you know, buy, fix, and flip, where you have to resell to a family someone who needs a mortgage versus dealing with actual cash buyers. Now, again, if you're on uh, any meeting, uh, you can go over to flippinard.com and you can see uh, the live uh, video of this at flippinard.com. So, just to make people aware on any meeting, again, all right. So, who am I? Uh, I have to go through this part of it. Some of you all may already be familiar with it, but um, my name is Ty Taylor. Um, I, I named myself the Flip Man several years ago. It's all about branding. The internet market is my thing, uh, as far as a hobby anyway. I'm just fortunate enough to make a little money off of it, but I make my living off doing deals. How did I get started? Well, we have to go back to how did the entrepreneur bug hit me? You know, I'm not one of these individuals that uh, had been an entrepreneur as far as they could remember, back to seven, eight years old, selling lemonade or garbage bags door to door um, or, or, or washing cars or whatever. Uh, all I wanted to do when I was a youngster was play basketball, thought I wanted to play football and chase um, females. You know, that's all I wanted to do as a young man. I had no idea about business. Um, I knew I didn't like working outside, <laughs> but I would do what I needed to do to feed myself. So fast forward to college, and I'm not sure what inspired me to look into entrepreneurship. I, I can remember me saying, uh, I heard this in a, in a college class or somebody gave a speech or something. And uh, I had to look back and I guess you don't know, and not, not that I know everything now, just but just, just thinking about my youthful thoughts back then is they said a job was something you had to do and a career was something you wanted to do. Yeah, both of them are still jobs <laughs> at the end of the day. 
Um, I guess one of them is supposed to be better, be better than the other. But at the end of the day, it's all about being happy. So if you're happy on your job, it, you know, it doesn't matter about entrepreneurship or any of that. If you're happy, that's all that matters because you have all the money in the world and be miserable as a human being. Uh, but what? But with that being said, you're not here to find out about how to get a job. You're about here, about here by possibly producing jobs and you're being the one to producing a job by owning your own business. So, so anyway, so in college, not enough of that rambling, but in college, uh, as I said, uh, got the entrepreneur bug and decided to, um, uh, I came up with the great idea that I was gonna use my student loan money to buy used cars and uh, become a millionaire. All right, so I figured out how to get a dealer's license. Not even sure how I did that. Was, that was before the internet. That was the early 90s. And, uh, well, I say the early 90s. That was before mainstream internet. The internet has been around longer than that, but you, as far as the general public. But anyway, so um, figured out how to get a dealer's license. I started going to dealer's auctions. What I didn't know was that you really, really need to be mechanically inclined or you will get your hat handed to, to you. Uh, so that's what happened to me. I got put out of the business quickly. So um, the next thing that I did of any significance, you know, I had the bug at that point, was a mobile car wash. Got the idea from a friend of my old, one of my older brothers who was uh, had started his own mobile car wash business in Orlando, Florida. Uh, he had made over six figures uh, uh, with this particular business. So um, I found out about it on a, on, a, on a weekend vacation to Black Beach weekend in Daytona back in 1995. So as I said, he told us about what he was doing. So I couldn't wait to get back to Birmingham to, um, to, to, to try to start it here. And so I bought a, um, a baby blue uh, passenger van that the seats were uh, taken out for, for 900 bucks, about a 100 gallon tank for water and a pressure washer. I was in business and a sign to go to the place outside my van whenever uh, I was on site doing jobs to attract more business. So I would show up at, show up at barber shops, at, at uh, hair salons, uh, places of employment of people that I knew. And boom, you know, that spring and summer, I uh, was making money, uh, myself, a cousin and a, a childhood friend, but it got cold. And I realized then that that, was, that wasn't going to be something that I could do long term. So I was out of that business. So always had ideas. Uh, so I bounced around to some multi-level marketing stuff. You know, obviously people make money with that. It just, I was not able to make any money of any significance with it. So uh, fast forward to 2002, I was involved with uh, prepaid legal and um, with prepaid uh, legal, it's now called Legal Shield. And a friend of mine and his now wife were going to school to become real estate agents. And the guy that normally taught the class uh, wasn't there and the substitute, he talked about being uh, uh, not being an agent, but a real estate investor and, and creative ways of real estate investing. So my friend told me about some of the things that he was saying, and uh, I didn't act on it at that time, but it sounded interesting. So fast forward a couple of months later, I was at, at my mom's house uh, for Christmas. As a matter of fact, it was December 27th, a couple of days after Christmas. I was up early one morning waiting on her to prepare breakfast, serving biscuits, which was my favorite. And um, I was watching TV and I noticed one of Carlton Sheets, No Money Down infomercials, which they had been running for years, you know, but uh, like anybody, you're like, yeah, right, or whatever, because they don't tell you anything on the infomercials just about, hey, Carlton helped me make $40,000. Carlton made. So, um, so I was watching it about halfway through the program. So I found, went up the dial and found it on another channel and uh, watched it from then again at the end. Again, it didn't tell you anything, but it did somewhat inspire me. And uh, it was more or less, I thought to myself, he can't, he can't be lying about all of this. All right, so, um, 
So I waited till I got back to Birmingham. At that time, my mom didn't have internet. So and I went to this entrepreneur message board that I used to frequent and asked a question, does Carlton Sheets program really work? And one person replied, uh, yes, it does, but Ron Legrand's course is better. So um, I found, I did a search for Ron's course and, um, uh, well, his website or whatever, and found it. And he had a course that had several different modules and it was $1,500. So at that time, you know, it almost took me a month to make that type of money. I didn't have that extra or that type of savings anyway. So they had a condensed version of the course uh, for $69.99 with shipping 80 bucks. So I received that. It was in cassette tape form and I listened to it. And all it was was a teaser to say, hey, this is something I need to be doing or something that I can do. And so I made up in my mind, if I had to get a second job, I would to uh, save that $1,500. So a couple of days later, I thought about eBay and I did a search on Ron's name and there were a couple of auctions that were running, selling his product. And so um, I lost, I bid it on the auction and lost. And the guy that was running the auction and back then, I guess sellers or people that are running auctions could contact bidders and uh, the bidder, I mean, the, um, the guy that was running the auction asked me, did I want a burnt version of the, of the course, you know, a copy of it, a bootleg copy of it. So we bounced around and we agreed on a price of $400. So I sent in the for it, which is still was a huge sacrifice at that time for me. The $1,500 was out of the question, but something didn't get paid, I'm sure, for me to send him that $400. And I suggest someone do that. I'm just telling you what I did. And so... Um, I, I received the packet, probably one of the most exciting days of my life. It was really like Christmas. I went from knowing not anything about real estate until three weeks later, knowing I knew more than probably 98, 99% of the population about real estate. And But I was on information overload. But if, if nothing else I got out of what really attracted me was wholesaling first, uh, lease options second. And, on, and also what attracted me was the opportunity that it wasn't really cold sales. If I did the proper amount of marketing, starting with inexpensive bandit signs, I didn't know they were inexpensive at that time, but that I could literally change my financial situation. And so I ordered a, a, a brand new Walmart had just opened. Uh, those that are familiar with Birmingham, John, Hop John Hopkins Parkway, AKA Highway 150 in Hoover. It had just moved from River Chase to over to that site. And um, uh, they had open, uh, now you have the, 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 the spaces in front of this, where the cashiers are, and they may have a couple of spaces for a, a nail shop or uh, something like that. And someone opened up a sign shop. So I went in there and ordered uh, 200, I mean, ordered 50 signs for $250, which was a drastic overpayment. But I didn't know at the time because I had never ordered any signs or anything. So a week or so late, I got the signs on a Friday and I put them out on a Sunday morning. By the way, Sunday morning is probably the best day of the week, in my opinion, to put out bandit signs. Um, you can really get a lot of them out, especially in the South where uh, people go to church a lot. They lay, you know, they sleep in, you know, just not a lot of traffic on the road or whatever. But, you know, just my two cents on that. But anyway, so I put them out on a Sunday morning. So the, the next morning, uh, next day, which was Monday, obviously, the very first two calls I received were a lease option opportunity and a wholesale opportunity. The lease option opportunity um, was a, uh, a gentleman, crazy gentleman, that uh, his mom died, left in the house. They still had a mortgage on it. He didn't live in the house. He had a mortgage on his house. He couldn't afford both payments. I mean, both payments on both houses and he was behind. So I explained to him that uh, for a cash deal, he owed too much, but I could take over the payments, put a tenant buy in there, charge him a little more than what the mortgage is. I keep the difference and I, I get a down payment up front. So I explained the entire process and that one to three years, he'll be cashed out of the deal. So I explained all that to him. So I advertised the property and a lady responded, and said uh, she would like to see the property. I showed her the property she wanted. it. $5,000 down. Lady gave me $5,000, $5,100 bill sitting in the old Charlie's out in the Roebuck area of Birmingham. All right, so, which doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, so um, 
the guy that owned the property was a handyman. And so to create a win-win, it still needed a few repairs and the lady wanted to get some of that stuff done before she moved in. So I thought it was a great idea since he was familiar with the house to let him do some of the work. He can make a little extra money, blah, blah, blah. All right. Also, the, the guy that owned the property, he wanted to um, uh, refi the property that he, he was in. And, and I was still working at Bell South at that time, which is now at and and uh, the, one of the guys I worked with, he did mortgages on the side. So, you know, I put those two together, the, the owner of the property and, and my guy. So just in general conversation, my guy told uh, the owner about, I had uh, already found someone to move in the house and the lady had already given me $5,000. What did he tell him that for? He felt as if, he felt that I should have given him, if not had all of that money. So when he was supposed to meet the lady over there to do the repairs, uh, he uh, <laughs> he told the lady that to get off his property, Tyrone didn't own it, he was gonna call the police. So the lady left the property, called me crying because she had thought she had been scammed. And um, she thought she had been scammed and it, you know, what, what was she going to do? So I told her, you know, if I, if I asked her where was she at right now, I would bring her up money. I had already spent $700 of it or so. And at that time, I wasn't making money like I replaced $700 like that. I'm not sure how I came up with it, but I did. So anyway, so I, I, I met the lady, gave her money. So I called the owner and he and I got into a heated argument. Long story short, found out he was a pastor. I made a smirk comment about him. And I feel for the people that he he's, he's uh, pastoring over. And um, the last comment he made to me, if I can remember correctly, uh, if I ever see you again, it won't be pretty or something to that effect, he said. All right, so anyway, that's how that, so that blew up in my face. I could have given up then, like this stuff doesn't work. But so it blew up in my face, $500 in my hand, a couple of days later, out of my hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to give it back. All right, so fast forward, to, uh, as I said, the first two calls were deals. So the other one was a uh, wholesale opportunities. It was two sisters. Their mom passed and she um, left them the house. And like a lot of people, we're not going to sell mom's house. Uh, we have a lot of members here, blah, blah, blah. We'll just rent it out to family members or rent it out and just collect the income. After trying that for a few years and family members not paying them, tearing the house up and so on, uh, they were ready to sell. They were motivated seller. They were tired landlords. They were they they were a combination. They inherited the property, which could be a probate situation or inherited, and they were tired landlords. So they were double motivated. All right. So anyway, so we agreed upon twenty thousand dollars. I went over uh, to one of the sisters' house to sign the contract. Showed up in my nineteen. I'm gonna have a picture of that next week. I'm, I'll find one. 1985. 1985 Toyota Celica white convertible. Now I did love that car, but it was 18 years old. Cause some people ask me, say, my car is really a rag, blah, blah. man, just stuff. If they're motivated, it, it, it's not going to matter. It, it's just not, you know, you may have a couple of people that have a problem, but it's not going to matter. Plus it's going to take a deal or two. You can upgrade your ride if you wanted to. But anyway, so uh, they actually thought I had the money with me. That's how motivated they were. That's how uh, green they were to the process. So I told him, no, it doesn't work like that. We have to go through, we have to do this, this, and this. And so, um, uh, so anyway, so I advertised the property, the newspaper, and um, uh, at, at that time, the newspaper was effective. It's a total waste of time now, even if a newspaper even exists in your city. So I uh, advertised it in the newspaper and um, uh, got a few calls, but a realtor called me, said he had a, a client that was a cash buyer. So I explained to him I was wholesaling. You know, I wouldn't do that now, you know, not up front like that, but I didn't know any better. So I explained to him um, that I had under contract for 25, I wanted to, uh, under contract for 20,000, but I wanted 25 for it. So he said, yeah, he could probably get his buyer to pay, but he wanted half of that 5,000 that I would have made. So I agreed to that. So I met those guys in a, uh, a shopping center parking lot. They gave me a $500 earnest money. We closed it at his attorney. That's why I tell people, don't even worry about a title company or a closing attorney because normally your buyers are going to dictate that. Now you'll have some black buyers that don't care, but normally if they're seasoned, they already have multiple places that they can close and you can just piggyback off of those relationships. 
And that's why I encourage people to watch all my videos because I say this a lot. It's just like other things. Every question is answered in a free video if you can't afford to pay me to be your coach. Anyway, so we closed the property and I made $2,500 March 5th, 2003. Uh, the sellers were happy for me. You know, they say, Taylor, how much did you get? <laughs> you know, they were walking out, you know, like, you know, they were happy for me, even though they got a lot more than I did, you know, but they were happy for me. So, you know, people are, the seller's going to be mad because like, they know you're not doing this for free. And the buyers, you don't even worry about them for real. You don't even want to deal with buyers that care uh, how much you want to make because you want to have relationships with your buyers so they can buy over and over again. They, trust me, they don't. They may care, but they know they're getting the, the better end of the stick because they're going to make more money than you as far as a bottom line number in most cases. So anyway, so that was my first deal. So I said all of that. I went through, I failed in a lot of businesses from a small town, uh, less than a thousand people, no smarter than you are. Trust me, I'm not. I, but the difference may be I take action. So what I've discovered uh, obviously, there's the hard way. Then there's a lot easier way, a simpler way. I like to say more simple, probably than easy. Uh, most people think you need tons of money uh, to start. Uh, wasting time thinking uh, they need to have a real estate license. You don't. I'm gonna probably do a, a, a video on that uh, coming soon. Uh, you know, just which will be a refresher. Uh, waiting till they figure everything out. That's probably the hold back on for most people. They feel like they just have to know everything and don't want to make a mistake. I still make mistakes. I made a huge one this, this summer. It cost me six grand, a rookie mistake, a rookie mistake. But um, that's a story for another day. Um, I'm talking about six grand, not that I lost because I didn't put the deal together, but actual money that I put into the deal and lost it. So anyway, so working, uh, working a job, uh, Obviously, to keep the lights on, you got to do what you got to do. I didn't hate my job. I just wanted more. Uh, taking pointless business classes. I went to college, history uh, major, uh, business administration mine. I thought I wanted a degree in finance, but you at least got to pass your classes to do that. So you're not dealing with Einstein here. So, But uh, going to, uh, uh, to seminars, done that. Even after I was doing deals, I was still going to seminars because I was looking for something additional that, that I may not have done and realized that I really wasn't, they really were no smarter than me, just like I'm no smarter than you are. But the difference is maybe just taking action, people just taking action with the information they do have. And again, I was on information overload. I learned about wholesaling, lease options, uh, subject twos, uh, flipping, which is retailing, uh, buy, fix, and flip. I learned about all that stuff at once. So I was just on information overload. I went from zero to 10,000. It just in a matter of time as far as my, my level and knowledge of real estate. So again, um, don't let me forget about the two free courses and we're gonna get into tonight's topic, locating owners of vacant properties. Um, let me just make sure everybody's still with me here. So we're still here, right? And again, on um, if you're on any meeting, I left it up, but you really should be on uh, flippinart.com and select the YouTube live but but again um, so I'm assuming everybody's still here with me all right well yeah, let's rock and roll then all right okay locating owners of vacant houses this is one of the free ways that I discussed uh, last week and we're going to go into a little more detail on it Obviously, the easiest way to do that is just driving for dollars. Now, you can buy, I guess, lists that say they're vacant. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Maybe they're getting the list downloaded from some type of mailing source that verifies vacants or whatever. But generally speaking, those are our preferred houses that are vacant over houses that are being lived in, even though I've done uh, a lot of both but they're just easier to wholesale because you, it, buyers generally, for the most part, need to see the house. And so if someone's already living there, whether it's the person that's trying to sell the house, which I've done those, or somebody just living there, I've done that, but the owner doesn't live there or they're renting it out, I've done those. So 
vacants are easier to do for a number of reasons. And, and that's probably the main reason. Um, obviously, if it's vacant, the, the chances are increased greatly that there's going to be some motivation and sometimes a high level of motivation to sell the property. So let's get into some of the, 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 the I guess, the, the nuts and bolts of it. So identifying a vacant house, uh, obviously some of them are standing like a sore thumb. Sometimes you won't know that they're vacant because you know whoever owns it keeps the property up and, and just to make it appear to still be uh, occupied to keep, I guess, vandals out or whatever. So obviously the first one is boarded up. That's obviously vacant. Sometimes you'll see a house, the lawn and everything is still uh, uh, taken care of, maybe boarded up, or, but it may not be. And there are no curtains, but you can see straight through the house that no one lives there. Now, I've been fooled like that once. I, a house appeared to uh, be vacant. You could see right through the house. You see there was no furniture in the part of the house that you could see in and walked up and, and, and the person opened the door. Can I help you? I, <laughs> the only thing you could say, I thought the house was vacant. You know, I buy houses and um, we were just looking for some houses in this area. So I was just totally shocked. But that's one of the ways, obviously, you can identify that. You see right through. So you might want to look, you know, that 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 could be a crap shoe. But a lot, most of the time, I'm right on that. Like I said, it's only one time that I can remember where I thought it was vacant and it wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. It was another time also where the grass was really high and I thought it was vacant. But it wasn't. It wasn't vacant. So... I was going to go to the next point here, but no, no lawn care. So that doesn't automatically mean that it's vacant. It's just, you got probably got a lot of mad neighbors that this person is not taking care of their lawn and uh, ugling up the neighborhood. Uh, sometimes you can notice that the mail has piled up in the mailbox. If it's one of those mailboxes, well, it could be on the street or it could be on the, um, uh, on the actual uh, the structure, you know, near the, a lot of times they, they're near the door. And you can see where the mail is just piled up in there and it looked like it's worn. Not that it's really piled up because sometimes they can receive a lot of mail at once, but the mail look like it's worn, meaning like uh, from sun and from wind and, and water, you know, rain. So uh, that's another identifier. So that's just simply identifying what a vacant house appears to be. And sometimes they may not actually be vacant. So be aware of that. All right. So the rest of the street. Now, whenever you identify in vacant houses, you can, uh, in a lot of cities, I know especially in Baltimore, I get calls from people, uh, non-students and non-students, and this may actually be a general question if, I'm, if I don't think they're trying to get a lot of information for free, but uh, they'll mention um, a house. They'll mention a, a, a house. And, you know, my question is always going to be how many other houses are vacant on the street? Well, it says, there's probably three or four of that right together. Uh, it's rare you're going to be able to do something with that. It's rare. Uh, now, I know they have, just using that city, they would have what they call row houses. So it may just be, you know, four or five, and then the rest of the street is okay. That may work. But generally speaking, I really don't like to see more than two, maybe three, depending on how attractive the street is and what part of town. But if we're talking blue collar, quote unquote, maybe in the hood. Uh, then when you start seeing three, you know, uh, because what you have to think about is whenever you're a potential buyer slash cash buyer, investors roll up, they're going to see the same thing. So that's not something that's attractive. Uh, just, just, just identifying a particular area that someone wants to invest in. So uh, I'm looking for how a streets, you know, a block where you know there may be one. Uh, maybe uh, one other or maybe possibly two other houses that are vacant. All right. So the neighboring houses. All right. Now you may only have that one house that's vacant, but you know, that's this, either the street is everybody's keeping up the lawn. Is there some consistency there? Everybody seems like they're taking care of the properties, painted, you know, so you just, they just, I mean, it may be quote unquote the hood or, or blue collar area, but every, they, they're taking care of their street, maybe this next street over might be horrible, but their street, everybody's, you know, taken care of. So, okay, that's something I'm going to look into. But if it's a street where there's trash everywhere, got furniture out, you know, furniture out front, people hanging out on the street, you know, then I'm probably going to pass on that again. When your investors roll up, 
they're going to see the same thing. And a lot of times they're just not going to be interested in something like that. So you're probably wasting your time on things. And unless now, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me back up. Sometimes if you can get it cheap enough, and that's going to be relative to your market, but explaining that situation in my market, if I can get it for between maybe one and three thousand dollars, I may just give it a go, put some bandit signs out in the area. Sometimes you just get people that grew up in that area. They don't look at it the same as an investor that had, would never live in that area. But people that grew up in that area uh, and may still live there, but they have six or seven grand laying around and they always want to try to invest in real estate, blah, blah, blah. Hey, boom, you may can pick up three or four grand quickly. You know what I'm saying? Just by putting out signs here. So uh, again, if I can get it cheap enough, that, describing that type of neighborhood, what I just described, that's what it'll work for me. So in your, some, someone else's market, that may be twenty or thirty thousand dollars, you know, still in this in that type of neighborhood. From what I'm explaining, all right. So again, as I explained, low activity hanging out. I explained the rest of the street that matters. So the visual that you have to think in terms of the investor when they're rolling up, what are they going to see? And you know, a lot of times these people do not live in those areas, so they look for something as close as possible. Hey, I could possibly live here. A lot of times it doesn't matter where they're like, but you know what I'm saying. Consistency of cleanness of the street as far as the other neighbors taking care of the property and not that many vacant, not a lot of people hanging out on the street and so on. All right, so mo methods of locating on. So you've identified a property that you say, hey, um, you know, this sounds like something I should target. Well, the first thing is the, the tax bill has to go somewhere. And what I mean by that is, is that all real estate was vacant land or a structure on a house or whatever is being taxed. That's how stuff gets paid for. It's one of the ways how stuff gets paid for is through real estate tax. Um, so the tax bill has to go somewhere. So that starts with either the county or the city, depending on how your municipality and how your taxes are paid, where you live. But normally you can find this stuff online. Now, a lot of those websites, those uh, those governmental websites, whether it's a city or county or state, they're not always user-friendly and they're gonna be a lot different from your, your county, your city, my city, my state. They're just gonna be different. So some people are a little bit more savvy, a little bit more, uh, uh, I guess, used to trying to figure out how to locate stuff like that on the internet and others are not, so I understand it. So if I, if I wasn't, um, as internet savvy as I am, what I would do is I'll just simply to do one or two things. I'll pick up the phone, call, uh, find out, you know, the tax assessor, maybe call some tax collector, maybe call something different in your state or your market and uh, find out what's their, their website and can I search uh, property owners on the site, you know, who owns the property through that site. And then they may give you an idea of, now you can't do it through the tax site. This is, here's the other site to see who owns the property or here's the, the place on the site where you need to go. Now, sometimes it may be difficult to get someone on the phone to help you with that. You may have to just actually go down there. You know, I'm not beyond that. So, and I'll, I'll stand around and I'll look and see how <laughs> some of the people, uh, the people that are working there and how they're handling customers uh, ahead of me and try to choose the one that seems like, hey, they may be the most helpful. Sometimes if you got to, if it's, it's females, uh, me being a male, they'll work with me quicker than they will with a female and vice versa. A male will work quicker with a, a, a female, you know, so sometimes you play some of them games also or whatever. But anyway, so, uh, so that, those are the ways that you, so the tax bill has to go somewhere. So that's what that means. All right. So neighbors. All right. So you may not have any luck even after you find who owned it through the tax bill, but you now have their name. So you may just go back out and just knock a few doors, the house on both sides of it and across the street. A lot of times those people know what happened with that house. A lot of times these people know, especially in the older neighborhood where you see a lot of people that's been, been there for 15, 20, 30 years, they know exactly who owns the property. They may not know how to reach them, but they know who owns it. But a lot of times they know how to reach them. So, you know, you contact the neighbors, you want to give them an incentive to actually work with you. you. You don't want to say, give me the person's name, the seller's name, you leave your number, let them know, hey, if I buy this house, I'll give you a $500 referral fee after we buy it, or a thousand, you know, whatever the number is. So you give them an incentive to make it happen. All right, so Google is your friend. Sometimes it's just as simple as once you get the person's name, 
just Google their name. Maybe go to whitepages.com and you can, and their information is right there. I've done that a lot, you know, a, a lot. It just, especially because you're dealing a lot where a lot of people have cell phones and they don't have house phones, but the age group that owns a lot of real estate, especially real estate that's paid for, or people in their 50s, 60s, 70s and, and older, a lot of them still have residential phone lines and their phone numbers are listed. And it's just, a, as I said, a Google search away. You may actually know their actual mailing address. So you Google their name and the mailing address. If they have a listed phone number, it's going to pop up. It just is, you know, so you may have to search through some sites and you'll just notice their name, their address, to your cell phone number. Normally, that's going to be their actual landline number. So uh, keep that in mind. Google is your friend, just like YouTube is your friend. Guess what? Google is the mom of YouTube. Google owns YouTube, if you didn't know that. Google for thought. And we're on YouTube now. Bless YouTube. Social media. So uh, now if you get a phone number sometimes and you, you're finding uh, it difficult to reach that person, uh, social media sometimes is an option just by doing a search on their name. You know, a lot of uh, people uh, that you wouldn't think are on social media, they are. It's just, and a simple reason is, and I didn't learn this, I didn't come up with this, I just saw another guy missing, it made sense, is that, uh, I think it was Gary Vanderchuk, but um, he said that Facebook has aged up, meaning that a lot of times the reason, like, I know my mom wants to be on Facebook and she's 70 plus, right? Uh, everybody, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, she was begging me to, 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 to walk her through it. I just got to take the time out and do it and set it up on her tablet. But a lot of times the older people want to get there because their grandbabies or their kids or great grandkids are there where they can actually view them. Not really maybe the kids themselves, but the parents may post the kids' pictures out there. They just want to see what's going on. It's just people live their lives out on those uh, channels. So that's a way to possibly reach out to someone. I've done that. and not closed a deal from, but I have been able to reach out to some sellers that I was looking for through Facebook and found them, sent them a message. They responded. No, I'm not interested in selling at this time. Probably reach out to them again. But that all comes from because I located the name because the tax bill has to go somewhere. All right, skip tracing. Now, uh, the site here I have here is Intellis.com. And basically go there, it's just one of the people search sites. There are plenty of others, but that's the one I like to use. And it doesn't cost that much per search, maybe 99 cents or $1.99. Sometimes they run a, a promotion where you can get a pass for $9.95 for 24 hours. But when you do that, you want to have multiple multiple names that you're searching for. So you do a search on there, a lot of times they're going to come up with a phone number and address. It may not be the current, but also what it's going to do is come up with a list of possible relatives. And so sometimes the relatives information is clear as a veil there that you can reach out to them by phone or mail, but by phone, uh, by just doing a cross search on the relative's name and you just pick up the phone and again, it's the same thing you did with the native. Let them know who you are, you're interested in buying a property, you show that their relative owns the property. You give them an incentive, $500,000 if you buy the property. Um, uh, so you leave your number for them to contact. So they just get an incentive. So those are ways that you uh, can locate on. And obviously, some of the ways that you're going to try to contact them is through direct mail, by phone. And you can, if you're going to be there, you can be this bold. You, you take a bandit sign. <laughs> and I, I've done it before, and uh, but the result wasn't good for me. But I've heard others where the results were good. Uh, you actually either nail a sign in the yard. Uh, I actually nailed it up on the house. Now, the house was really, it was really torn up. But they called me like it was a brand new house. Come take that sign down. And I went out there and took it down, you know. So, um, but I've had other people say they put a sound and the person called them and they did a deal. It didn't work out for me. I'm one of those people that uh, uh, I don't even know how I function. That's why I know if I can do this, anybody can do it. I, I didn't do it anymore, you know what I'm saying? Because of that bad experience or whatever. So, but again, uh, that's just another mess. So, direct mail, obviously, you can pick up the phone and call them. And you can go in, if you're bold enough, put a sign in the yard or on the, or on the actual house itself. Um, and if they're monitoring it, or again, if the neighbors are, you know, they'll give you a call. It may, you, you can't, 
It may be good, it may be bad, but there's some motivation there. Uh, they call you there, bam, there's a deal. You could you could do that a lot. In reality, you can put a sign on a lot of vacant houses. And, you know, but again, you know, the, the results may vary as far as people calling you and what the responses may be. So again, here we go. That's so located owners of vacant houses. You can go back and uh, go through this particular um, flipinar, this part of it. So we're going to get into the question and answer period again. We're going to give away two free courses at the end. Don't uh, let me forget. But before we get to that, most of you all are here because you want to change your financial situation. And it all boils down to numbers. Um, so three to five deals per month would normally take care of that for you. So it boils down to numbers as I said, uh, three to five deals per month, normally to generate those type of numbers, you need to be talking to three to five sellers per day, whether that's through uh, free methods or a combination of banner signs, direct mail, social media, internet, whatever. Uh, if you can accomplish that, you would do deals. It's just a matter of time. It, it just will be a matter of time if you're generating that much access. And you could generate a lot more calls and do a lot more deals, but I try to be just conservative and realistic in, in just presenting this stuff. So, uh, so let's break it down to some just raw numbers here. How many deals do you need? So one deal per month, average five to $7,000 per deal. That's 12 deals in a year. That's 60 to 84,000 uh, per year. Again, if you're on any meeting, you can go to uh, flippinart.com and join us on live on YouTube. Uh, just go to flippinart.com and select the YouTube live button. So that's 60 to 84,000 per year. Two deals per month, five to seven thousand dollars per deal. Uh, that's 24 in a year. That's 120,000 to 168,000 dollars per year. Bring it up a little bit. Five deals per month, five to seven thousand per deal. 60 deals, 60 deals in a year, $300,000 to $420,000 per year. As I said before, now they know your name at the bank. So we're going to give away the two free courses. Remember the 200 plus videos I have on YouTube. If you're here on the, uh, right now on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification by selecting the bell after you subscribe. Turn on the notifications so you will be alerted whenever I upload new videos and I go live on YouTube, such as this webinar, flipping art. You want a free copy of the contract that I continue to use after 14 plus years in the game? Text the word contract to 313131. Text contract to 313131. Treat it as a number. Just those six numbers, no area code. Do not text me. Text 313131 and the word contract. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, flipman.net on Instagram, the flipman on Twitter. Again, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're here. If you're interested in the coaching and courses, you can call or text me at 205-492-3425, or you can go to flipman.net to see what the current prices and offers are. If you need proof of funds, realpof.com. If you're going to deal with real estate agents or brokers, the only way that they're going to take you serious is you have proof of funds. So realpof.com, submit your number. Next page, keep Gak and explain exactly what's offered. You're in. PrivateMoneyList.net, the name speaks for itself. If you have buyers that need it or you need it yourself, PrivateMoneyList.net, go there, submit your number. Again, the next page, keep Gak and explain exactly what's offered. So we finished this portion of, of the flipinar. So we'll start with our uh, question and answer period. As I said, I will analyze some deals. So if you posted some stuff while I've been going through all of this information, you may want to repost it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff here. So um, somebody said, don't forget about the free courses. I want anyone here in Palm Beach County. Um, someone says, I am 17 years old. Can I still wholesale? 
I'm not sure about that, um, uh, sir, uh, how that works as far as running your own bid. I don't see why it would prevent you from doing that. If nothing else, you could put it in a, a, a older sibling, a parent, cousin, friend, or whatever is maybe 18 or older. So um, um, thanks, Harlem World King, for the comment. Tamla NYC, New York City. All right, um, let's see here. I have a seller, uh, Winston Solom Solomon said, I have a seller, says she owes 107, this is a single family home, ARV comps from 185 to 225. If she's willing to take the payoff and the house is in decent condition, you may have a chance there, Solomon, if she's willing to just take the payoff, if your numbers are correct, all right? Um, again, if you're on uh, any meeting, get over to flip, flipanard.com, flipanard.com, select YouTube Live, and you can join us. All right, so what we got here, so... Someone says, I have. To, I think you have to be 18 to sign a contract. So, yeah, so you may need some help on that, uh, young man, a young woman, young lady. Um, what's your, what are your thoughts on tax lien properties? Uh, each state is different on that. Um, who said that? Um, Nara 97, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, each state is different on that. So, um, I don't really just target those because I know like I had the great idea one year just to go down. And I, bought, I bought the list 25 bucks back down on what it costs now. And it was just pages of pay. They don't even have it online. It's probably an opportunity for somebody to put that in a database. I know in the state of Alabama and probably make a killing off of it just from investors. But um, uh, our laws are so crazy here. There's a long redemption period. Um, it, it, it just, it's going to bear from state to state on that. If you can understand your laws and where the holes are as far as opportunity to purchase, there's, yeah, there's going to be opportunities there. Uh, a lot of times you just simply contact the owner to see if they're interested in selling for the taxes or whatever. So uh, just depending on the property and the condition or whatever, but a lot of times it's going to be worth it. So, all right. Um, you said, where do you find mobile home ARVs? Well, I actually know a couple of people that are familiar with those. Those are all over the place, um, Erica. Um, it's best that you probably, and this is what I would do. I was just fortunate enough, a couple of people reached out to me. But uh, what I would do, Erica, is um, if you had, if you found a mobile home, I would call a couple of mobile home dealers and ask them what they would pay for it. You know, that's what I would do. You know, they'll want to know the uh, year, the manufacturer, the size of it, meaning the square footage, but they'll say the size, um, uh, what year, I said the year, uh, manufacturer, uh, how many bedrooms and baths, um, and they could probably give you an idea, you know, based without them seeing it, obviously. Maybe you can uh, email them a video or something other property, give them a better idea. Um, there's a lot of vacant commercial properties here in Dallas. Uh, let's work together. Uh, David Flores. Well, David, um, I'll be a fool. And some of you have heard me say that to turn down money. Um, you can only imagine the number of people that reach out to me on stuff like that. And to somewhat to, uh, make sure my time is managed as efficient as possible. You have to know how I think about it. And that only is going to come from training. You know, not trying to sell a course because I think I give enough, way enough information you can roll with it on your own. But that's the reason I just can't take on stuff. You know, like people just send me stuff. Ideally, that would probably be really good, but I'm just a one man game, you know, so I can't take, I just, I just can't put that out there like that. But somebody called me and they got a deal on the contract, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I can roll with that. But just starting from scratch on something, it makes it difficult for me just to put that out there because I'll just be bombarded with no which stuff. That's why someone opened it up here where I'll analyze uh, deals right here on, on the flipping R. So um, let me see. Uh, someone said, what's your email? Um, oh, they were asking Nara what's her email. 
Um, well, uh, as I said, uh, Winston, if she'll accept payoff, that's your offer. 107 is the most you're going to be able to pay on that and still may not be a deal without knowing the condition. Let's see here. Someone says, do you ever do any reverse wholesaling? Uh, define re reverse wholesaling. I think I know what you mean, but define it for others. Um, someone says, a fixer up uh, worth 88 under contract for a 47 duplex, fixer up a duplex while work for worth 88 under contract for 47,000, 10,000 uh, 10, in rehab. What is it worth? Well, well, you just said it. Um, if it's a duplex, uh, you would have to know what uh, what a number of bedrooms and bath, and then what those number those num those bedrooms and bath are rented for, uh, houses and apartments. Without knowing that, it's hard to say if you have an actual opportunity there. Um, so that, that's that's the main thing. Now, I, I may want to approach that, Carlos. Uh, as an owner financing uh, op opportunity with the owner, if they they will entertain it, but you still have to you have to know what the unit mix is of those two units. There's a two bedrooms, one bath, one bedroom, one bath, three bedrooms, whatever, and compare that to what other properties are are renting for in the area. All right, so what we got here. Uh, Joner, Tia, uh, if I came to your city, Ty, are you open to training one-on-one for like two days, two days, Friday and Saturday? Yeah, I, I offer that. Um, just text me or call me. Uh, it, you know, it's just pricey. Uh, it, it's the same whether I come to your city or you come here. And, and the reason I do that, because whenever, if I do something live with someone, you're actually taking me away from what I really do, which is do deals. Um, so, you know, that's why, you know, I charge what I charge or whatever, but um, just, just text me. Um, you, you see my number all over the place. So you know how to reach me. Uh, if not, you can just go to flipman.net. My phone number is there at the bottom of the page. Some uh, Pam, Don, Pam, Don properties. Flip man, do you fix and flip? I have. I got caught in the uh, 07, 08 uh, crunch when everything went down with the mortgage industry. If, if you're not familiar with it, just Google it. And I had seven houses that I was rehabbing and flipping at one time with hard money loans. And I paid for those for over a year, over a year. Got lost a lot of money, a lot of money. So I haven't revisited it since. Um, you know, that's just me. It's just like a uh, a girlfriend I was really crazy about. We broke up. She wants to get back with me, but mm, I'm not ready to do that. That's that's the attitude I have on it. So, uh, but no, nah, but I've done it before, Pam, Don, Properties. Um, let's see here. I'm not even sure if they're, oh, they're talking to each other. Okay. Uh, flip on your one page contract. Do I use the same contract to get the deal? I guess that means with the seller and the same con one to assign it. Well, you can. Sometimes the buyer may not want to do that, but on the seller side, yeah, you're good. Um, but you can use it for the same. I have a video on both explaining that for buyers and sellers. Um, I'm assuming they're talking to me. Okay, how active are you invest? That's that's what I do. You know, this stuff here is just a hobby. I love the internet, and um, it, the the amazing way you can reach out to people or whatever. Ever since 1999, before I even got into real estate, I was figuring out how to design websites and all that kind of stuff. I'm not any good at it, but I understand it, and so uh, just internet marketing and all that stuff. So this stuff that you see here. The purpose was number one to feed my hobby and maybe make a little money off of it. But you know, I do deals for a living to answer your question, Paris. Uh, 
Um, Steve, um, not sure how to pronounce the last name, but what do you use for a marketing campaign as in postcards? I don't, I don't do postcards. I do direct mail, but not, not in the way you think. I do it differently than everyone, everyone else um, as far as direct mail. Uh, Carla said, I use a three page contract, loss of deal because the other hosts are used a one page. Now I use a, you're a one page. All right, that's what's up, Carlos. Um, all right, someone said, if you have a seller that isn't for sure if she wants to sell, but when I contact her, she was a little, uh, I guess irritated about me calling. So should I send yellow letters? Uh, yeah, you can follow up every month or so, every couple of months. You know, doesn't sound like there's no motivation there. Um, can't make them sell. All right. Um, okay, Harlem World. Uh, How bad can a house be? Uh, well, I, I wholesale the house recently that was fire damage. Um, it was burnt up. <laughs> uh, wholesaled it for what, 58 something? It's worth probably about 200 fixed up. I needed probably about 75 or so in repairs. Uh, can you wholesale land? Yes, for sure. You can hold any form of real estate. Um, this needs to be a great deal. And uh, you drum up a buyer for it because it is a great deal. Land is a different animal because there's a lot of speculation there. If there's not any development going on around it, there's a lot of speculation where the development's going on, that's easy, easier. Um, but uh, there's no development going on. Um, it can be tricky, you know, but you have to get a great deal regardless. Um, someone, I'm not sure what your question is, Sydney. Flipping specific properties to investors already on your list. I'm not sure what the question is there. Uh, what paperwork is needed for wholesaling apartments? Is it the same as homes? Well, it just depends on the problem because they could be all over the place. You could have an eight unit building. Um, they only want 80 grand for it. You know, maybe empty, maybe filled, who knows? I mean, well, some rent it. And you can use that one page contract that I use, you know, but once you get up into some higher numbers, and I don't know what that mark is, I just know it when I see it, that one page contract is not going to work. Um, depending on if you got to deal directly with the seller or if a broker is involved, uh, then that'll determine where the contract comes from. But there's no standard contract for it, if that's what you're asking, uh, Lionel. Um, someone says, I have another seller that contacted me. I think the other family is handling the situation. Should I call them back? I don't want to harass them about, uh, but I want, want the sale. Um, yeah, you can follow back up with them. You know, um, they'll let you know if you bother, you know, you have to be somewhat aggressive. Um, but within reason, you know, I don't know where to draw the line and that's going to be different from each other business, how you do things, but yeah, you, you're going to have to be persistent and follow up is key in this business, you know, because you're not the only one doing it. Uh, so uh, I see people still on any meeting. You really need to get over to flippinart.com and, and tap the button that says uh, YouTube Live. But um, anyway, so. Um, Raheem, Ty, how long have you been doing real estate? Um for 14 years. Do you pay bird dogs for commercial wholesale deals? Uh, they produce a buyer. Um, it's a little bit more complicated for them to find a deal. They have to know what they're doing and most people don't. So I don't even put that out there on the, on, on the, on the deal side, but you can produce a buyer. Oh yeah, we'll pay well. Say so what paperwork is needed for wholesaling uh, apartments? Well, you still gonna need a contract. As I said, it's gonna 
You sometimes you may be able to get away with a one page contract. It just depends on how complicated, how big the property is. Sometimes it boils down how much they're trying to sell it for. I don't know what that cut line is. I just know it when I see it. Um, but there's no standard contract for it is what I'm telling you, because it may, if you got a broker involved, that's going to be one thing. If it's just you and the seller, it's going to be another. And it boils down to how, how complex the deal is. What are your thoughts on virtual wholesaling? Um, obviously, it can be done, but uh, with virtual wholesaling, we're just talking about houses. Um, it's all about resources at that point, and uh, you got to have somebody on the ground to assist you in, in some form of fashion. Um, the biggest hurdle with wholesaling houses virtually is keeping the seller and the buyer apart whenever the house needs to be shown, um, because most buyers are not going to buy the house without seeing it first. And uh, the seller is local, local in a lot of cases, and the buyer is local. You're the only one that's not local. And a lot of times you're the only one keeping them separated because sometimes sellers will not allow the house to be shown without them being there. So if you're in New York City and the house is in Florida and the buyer wants to see it, who's going to show it to them? Unless you have somebody on the ground, they're going to meet there at the house and that could be an issue. So if you can get around that, boom, the world is yours. Someone says, how do I calculate equity in a property? Um, well, equity is basically, well, it, it, you can go about it a couple of ways. Um, a $100,000 house, you can get it on the contract for 30, the equity is 70, but you still may have repairs. So the true equity may not be 70, but as far as where it sits and what the possibilities are, I guess you would say would be 70,000. So uh, that's the best way I can explain because there's a couple of ways to go about understanding equity because of loans in place, condition, what it could appraise for in its condition, what it can appraise for now in its current condition. So that that can be that can be a little tricky. But as far as wholesaling, you have to assume what it what it will be worth in excellent condition and and, and work backwards. Uh, Naira Foster said, my best way to find motivated sellers in Philadelphia through the county assessor public search that is inexpensive. I'm not familiar with that service. It may be great. You know, it may have it all listed right there. I, I can't answer that question for you, Ms. Foster. Um, Ty, is there a ballpark figure on how many houses you can expect to look look at before you find one that's a deal? As I mentioned before, if you want to do three to five deals per month, normally you're going to have to be talking to three to five deals per sellers per day. Normally, that that's those are the number. So you're talking about anywhere from 90 to 150 people to do three to five deals. So you just do the math from there. Now. When I started, as I said, the first two calls were were deals. One of them blew up in my face, but the first two calls were deals. All right, the next question is, uh, once I get the property on the contract, do I go ahead and send uh, the contract to the title company or attorney to check on liens, or do I go ahead and, and market the property? Especially starting out, I always suggest just go ahead and market in the property um, and the title uh, situation will be taken care of um, once you got a buyer in place. You know, sometimes the title may not be clear and blows up your deal, but I'll still wait until I have a buyer and uh, piggyback off his relationship on that side of it. Somebody says, what happened to the gold business, to the gold business? You know, competition. And when I started here in Birmingham, I was one of maybe only three people doing it, you know, just for a flat out gold store, uh, you know, pawn shops have always doing so um, just competition. And um, I also expanded uh, quicker than I should have had, like, let me see, one, two, three, I had five stores at one point and should have never probably went beyond two stores. So, you know, just, just some bad decisions and competition. 
Flip man, what does your real estate team consist of? Just me. It's just me. Um, just me. <laughs> uh, nothing is that complicated. Um, I do it full time. What else, what else am I going to do all day? Um, again, if I'm only talking to, it's say if even I was talking to 10 sellers in a day, right? We're only talking five minute conversations in most cases. That's only 50 minutes. So, um, and I'm not going to go, I'm only going to go out and look at, and I'm not talking to 10 people in a day, but I'm all, I'm just giving you like a large number, what I consider a, a large number, because that's what 300 calls a month. So, um, um, that's only 50 minutes out of your day. And you're only going to go look at the properties that make sense over the phone. So even if I was only going to look at two of those, um, we'll just say three of those, um, a day, you know, we're talking another couple of hours. So I would, that's a total of three hours worth of work. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it's not, it's, it's, it's not that time taxing of a business. That's another thing that's so great about it. Then you get your money in chunks. If managed correctly, you can live a pretty comfortable life. It doesn't take much. Um, yeah, I won't forget about the free course. Um, how do you market uh, for multifamily properties? You mean, I'm assuming to find deals. Um, you go through brokers. Um, some of it is just simply targeting um, stuff that's being uh, listed for rent online. Um, that's where I find most of my stuff. Some of it's just simply riding around in your local market um, and then searching places like Craigslist, maybe even Zillow. And sometimes the actual owner or the one posting the ad, or you can reach out to property management companies also um, they, some of them are going to be receptive to you calling and asking about a property that they're managing or another property that they're managing. Um, and you go from there. So, um, that's it. And then you can do direct mail. You can buy a list of multifamily. Some of it's going to be depending on the market that you're targeting, whether you're going through lists or some Melissa data, something like that. Some markets, uh, the way the county or whatever county you're targeting or city, uh, they have them listed uh, easily that can be uh, targeted. Um, so um, you can do it through direct mail also is what I'm getting to. So, but it just depends on the county and how they, the county that, that I target mostly here, which is, is Jefferson, uh, the way list source and da um, uh, Melissa data have it listed, you, you can't pull a large number of them for some reason. I, I got, I've never been able to figure out how to pull out a large number, but other markets that I've, you know, looked into just testing. Um, they'll pull up quite a few. So direct mail could be one of the, the easier ways to, to find potential um, owners of multifamily. No, I, I didn't forget the courses, uh, Steve. Um, we had, I'm still asking questions, man. All right, let's see here. Okay, Tamla's out. Okay, bye, Tamla. All right, so uh, how do you identify the contact information of, for properties that are in a trust? Well, it'll just, it's still gonna have a mailing address. I know it does here in my state. And it'll have, the, it may have Janice Rogers uh, Trust. And so, you know, you just mail and you identify high trustee. You know, that's how you identify who you're actually mailing to. Um, Keith Murphy says, is there a discount for real quest? Another mentor says they, they offer discounts through him. Is there any truth to that? Possibly could have, uh, he could be acting as a, um, an affiliate for them. Uh, I hadn't used it in a long time. Um, it's, it's too many services that you can use that are pay, pay as you go. I know you probably see a couple of my older videos that recommend it. But I hadn't used real quest in years and years. All right. Um, someone says, do you know if Georgia is a good place to hold? So I guess that's what he means. Well, Gerald, I asked you a question. Do people get divorced there? Do people lose their jobs there? Do people die in Georgia? 
Do people move away from Georgia? Do you think you have any tired landlords? Do you think people get sick there and have medical bills? Do people have kids that go off to college that they may not can afford? So if you answer yes to any of those questions, Georgia is a good place to wholesale. Someone says, you have been successful with Ron LeGrand's course. Have you ever met him? No, I, I bought a bootleg copy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not one of these people, man, that um, um, that's why, you know, I encourage people to go to real meetings and all that stuff and join up the network. But I could go to something like that and you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not going to say anything to anybody. Somebody talks to me, I can hold a conversation, obviously, but I'm not a network. I'm a very introvert person. Sometimes I'll walk in a store and I know this sounds crazy. I'll see somebody I know, and we ain't nothing, you know, no beef or nothing like that. Somebody I actually like, but I mean, they just want to feel like talking to them, but they may be long winded. You know, I may go on Walmart and have a bug and go get some water, some case of water, but I don't do that much shopping like that. But, um, um, and uh, maybe some 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 uh, uh, the detergent for washing or something. You need. And I may just push the bug and just walk out of there. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making, you know, I wouldn't care to meet Ron Grand, you know, but he did change my life financially. You know, but that's just me. You know, I'm not one of those people that will seek out an autograph from someone and nothing like that. Just, you know, it's not me at all. Uh, someone says, um, have you ever bought any tax lien deeds? Um, no, nah, like I said, I, I talked about that a second ago. Our, our state is a little different. It's, it's, it's a little tricky. You know, some states you can get those quickly, but, you know, our state doesn't work that way. It, it takes some years to acquire that. So, yeah, Kathy says she has three on her to me, myself, and I. That's what's up. All right, I'm going to round these up here. So I'm going to a couple of more and then I'm going to round this up. All right, someone says, that's for when I mail off yellow letters. Um, I know there's some days that are suggested, but I'm so sporadic with it. So I just mail them out. Uh, if I had to suggest, I would probably mail them out. Um, yeah, like probably on a Monday, maybe like a Friday. You know, I don't, you know, I, I guess, you know, but I'm so sporadic with it. But I, I guess they may, those may be the two best days. Uh, Ever says, how many calls a day do you use to make or have you made to get one deal? I don't make calls. Yeah, that's the thing. That's not part of what I do. I'll tell you that's what you need to do, but. I'm not built that way. I'd rather put out the marketing ever to let people call me. Um, ideally, I would like to be receiving, as I said, between maybe five to seven deal calls per day, you know, to reach a, that number for the number of deals in a month, you know. So that's putting the marketing in place. But I encourage people to reach out and uh, call, make calls, you know. Uh, you never know. Uh, action. You know, it's all about action. But I'm not that type to, you know, I, I'll just get discouraged really quickly, you know, doing that. So I, I prefer people calling me, then I feel like I'm in control of the actual contact. So, but that's me. Jamar uh, says, I guess it's talking about yellow day when they receive them on a specific day, better response or a doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I don't think it's any rhyme or reason on that. I'm sure some studies out there that probably can dispute that, but you know. If you, uh, if when you, the free courses, how much is the unlimited? You just have to go to flipman.net and check that. I don't like to quote prices. I used to do that on these videos, but these videos turn into months, years. You know, people say, hey, you still offering that course at 397? <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> you know, that's, that's four years old or some, something like that or whatever. So you just have to go to flipman.net to check pricing. Uh, 
uh, kicks it. I turn uh, five dollars into four thousand with this one page contract. That's what's happening, man. That's what's happening. Uh, Ty, would, uh, why do people say that you can be sued in wholesaling and say don't get into it and you have you ever been sued? Uh, you're probably talking to people that's never done a wholesale deal and, and have any clue about it. A lot of times you're talking to people and they're supposed to know about a topic, but that's, that's realtors, sometimes even well, not some attorneys also. Instead of them saying, I don't know what you're talking about, they, re they, re they would tell you that's illegal. No. Don't say it's illegal. Say, I don't know. People are afraid to just say, I don't know, and they're supposed to be an expert. But I've been sued before, but, you know, for some foolishness, more, it was for actually a lease option uh, deal that I got into. One of the reasons I don't fool with it now. But, um, and uh, also, um, um, you could be sued for anything, man. This is, we're in a, a very, uh, what they call it, um, litigious society doesn't mean they have any grounds but people if, if they're willing to pay an attorney they'll they'll file the paperwork on you so you know you can be sued for anything it doesn't mean they have any real grounds on it but you're going to probably have to dial up to defend yourself so you if you think if, if you think you're going to get in business and be successful and never be sued you probably need to keep clocking in it's just going to happen walmart's get sued trillion dollar company you know, they're going to get, you're just going to get sued. You know, just, they're just the name of the game. I don't care what it is. If you're a landlord, you'll have tenants to try to send sue you. It did that just the way it is. People did, we're a litigious society. So they, you know, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you know, you're going to get sued, you know, but I've been fortunate it's only happened once and they threw it out because it was, it was, it was bogus. Uh, do you use the toll free number? Yeah, 1 800 sell a house. I don't market it as heavy as I do. I'm not sure where I'm going to go with that. Uh, but 1-800-SELL-A-HOUSE is the number that I currently use. But it's expensive because I, I've taken on an entire country with it. Locally, it's not that expensive, but I, I have all the, all the area codes in, in the U.S. on that number, except one. Can you send an email and call the attorney to build a relationship with attorneys? Textbooks, I'm, why would you need to build a relationship with them? For what? Um, he, uh, answer that for me. Well, what are you, what are you trying to do? Uh, is it best to operate on an LLC or yourself? An LLC is best, but don't let that stop you from getting started. You can do that later. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give away the two free courses. Um, let me do this. Um, get somebody to help me choose these. Um, Okay, the first one is first one is Alicia, Alicia. Text me at 205-492-3425. Alicia, Alicia is the first one. Okay. Next one is, you know, well, let me record that, Alicia, Alicia. Let 
The next one is uh, Outlaw to to PBS. So Outlaw, text me at 205-492-3425. So all right, guys, um, again, join us next week. Um, tell a friend or family, appreciate everyone. And what I'll do is I'll probably take this down, edit it, and put up the, the, the part of it that matters. I'll try to screw up some of the, the junk out and uh, simplify it. So if you want to go back and review this, you can you can do that. I appreciate everyone that's joining us. So we're going to go full time on flippinart.com through uh, YouTube in the future. So any meeting, it probably won't be an option next week for that. We'll probably cancel that service. So Flippinart.com is where you're going to be able to access it in the future. Uh, so that's Flippinart.com to be able to access uh, future Flippinars. So again, I appreciate everyone that's come out tonight. Um, Alicia, Alicia, and Outlaw 2 PBS. Uh, you can send me a message here on, on YouTube or you can text me at 205-492-3425. Thanks. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.